Hey, y'all, have you ever wanted to create a table of contents in Google Docs and just didn't know how or were frustrated with how it works? Well, we just got some updates and it's really easy. So let me show you how to create a table of contents and to customize it. Okay, y'all, let's talk about table of contents and the correct way to create one. And this is true whether you're using Docs or Microsoft Word, they all work off of style sets. And so if you're not using the style sets, you're doing it wrong. And by that, I mean, if you are simply highlighting your headers and your, your main titles here and changing the font and the font size manually, what you need to do is to actually use the headings that are built in here. So you can see this one was already set to heading one. It could look exactly the same, but still be under normal text if you're not correctly using the headers. And what this is going to do is set up the hierarchy for our table of contents. And so you can see here, I've just added some, some filler text to give us something to work with so you can see how this adds up. So when you have your document ready to go, what you're going to do is you're gonna go into insert and you are gonna go all the way down to the bottom to table of contents. From here, you have three choices and you can see there is, you know, kind of the plain one, there's the one with the dotted line and then there's the one that's linked and that will link to those sections in the document. I kind of like the dotted lines. It helps my eyes stay on the right page number. So I'm going to insert that. And so here you can see that hierarchy. Now, what's great is we can still edit this even further. So if you select the box that's your table of contents, go to the three dots and go to more options. And from here, you can still choose from those three. So if you didn't like the one you first selected, you can choose whether you want to show page numbers. Sometimes page numbers aren't necessary. This is pretty short, probably wouldn't be necessary if this was all I was putting together. And then if you don't have the option for those lines or you want to change that, you can have the dots, the dashes, or the solid line right here. Now, what I like about this is that um, it's much easier, it works better, and that these are already linked. Remember what I said, this one is, is the, the third choice where it's blue and underlined and people recognize that as a link. They may not recognize it when they're looking at this, but if you see, um, if you click on something, it is linked to that part of the document and it will jump to that. So it's automatically creating those bookmarks within there. So that's great. The other thing is you can hop down here to heading levels. And so if you're not seeing all the headings that you want to see, you can check these boxes. So I went down to heading three, but you may have four, five, and six that you want included as well. Kind of depends how you have structured your document. Usually three is as much as you wanna see in one document, but maybe even just two. And then you can decide how far to indent those. So you can really get into the granular design now of the table of contents. One more important feature that you should know about the table of contents is how to refresh it when you make changes because it doesn't automatically change as your document changes. So for instance, if I added another header right here for screencast and highlight this, I'm going to make this a heading three. And now I want screencast to show up here what I have to do is click on the table and then you wanna click on this little refresh update table of contents button and now it will be added. The other thing I just wanna mention, I will include a link below. You can set a default font for all of these style sets. So if you look at mine, you'll see some of these are not that default of Arial, you know, black. Mine are gray and I have selected Calibri just to make it a little bit different. And I will link below this video to show you how to change the default fonts in Google Docs and use those. If you like this tip, ring the bell, 
give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you haven't already, hop on over to shakeuplearning.com and check out all of our free resources there. Bye, y'all.